What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we are here with the first episode of our playthrough of The Escapist. Now this is a pretty exciting game for me because I don't talk about this much on the channel, but I really, really like prison stuff. I, I read a lot of stuff on prisons, I have family members in prison, I grew up across the street from a prison. California Medical Facility was the name of the place, it was actually where Charles Manson was held, and so I'm really, really into prison stuff, and how rare it is, it's really rare that I ever get to play a game that coincides with one of my hobbies. Like for example, I'm a geologist, I have a degree in geology, but there are no geology video games and so I don't ever get to kind of sate that lust right there but this is actually really fun for me because I get to do a prison video game now and so I think we're gonna have a lot of fun running around keystring contraband and otherwise getting ourselves into trouble while we participate in our stay in con college so if you don't know what the escapists is the best way that I could describe it is it's kind of a it's a prison simulator but the best correlation that I could possibly draw is that it's the bully but just in prison like, you have places you're supposed to be at certain hours, so for example, you have to go to the workshop at this hour, you've got to go work out at this hour, you get free rec time, and in between, you're trying to orchestrate your own escape. And it's a really cool game, I mean, it's it's a fun idea. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and start a new game off here, because I don't want to talk too much. That's going to race my old game. I have about three to four hours in game, I've got a pretty good grasp on what works and what doesn't work. I haven't really started breaking out of prison yet, but I've gotten into the ventilation system, I've learned to manufacture weapons, and I've learned to get past checkpoints and things like that. And so I know enough to where we can get some episodes going, and I'll just learn the rest along the way, and you can learn it with me, and we can really kind of go together, jumping into the pool on this prison adventure. So, okay, let's start a new game. We get to choose what we look like. And I think it just randomly generates this, I think. We're gonna go with the bald guy, I think. We could either, I'm, I'm down with, we could either go with Lifer, or we can go with Maru. We can rename them if we desire it as well. I don't know why it's making a sound at me now when I'm clicking through things, that's a little worrying. Okay, well I'm just gonna go with this guy over here. We'll go with him, and we'll name him... Young, oh that's not it, that's Yong. We'll go Yong Bleezy, oh no we ran out of space, well damn it. Well now I'm gonna have to come up with a new name. I suppose we could call him, we'll go with Mildew from our pirates, we'll pretend that we got captured, like we pirated all the way to the 2000s, and we got captured, so we are now Mildew in prison, let's ride. We have to choose our prison, I'm assuming later on the game is going to be open for mods, or B, they're just going to have multiple prisons as DLCs, and the only one they have right now is First Peak Correctional, so let's begin our game. Okay, and so it's gonna be a little bit quick as we start this game out. I'm gonna try and take it slow and explain things to you, but the time in the game runs on its own. Like, I can't slow it down, I can't pause the game or anything like that without opening, like, the crafting menu. And so I'm really gonna try and do my best to explain things to you as we go along. There are a lot of things you're gonna- this game is- I would say it's a pretty good simulation for like a first time person in prison, not necessarily in a practical sense, like this is not going to be applicable to going to like real prison, but they've simulated that feeling of being really really lost in the shuffle very well because you don't know how to do anything when you come into prison. You're weak, you're scrawny, you're stupid, you have no idea how to manufacture like a simple tomahawk or anything like that, you basically have no idea how to survive in here and so over time you're going to be increasing your intelligence, your strength and your speed to kind of fill in these skill sets and so after a while you start to learn where the blind spots are where you can jump people you start to learn where the guards patrol so you can jump guards if you want to I mean basically it's kind of weird how as you play the game you start to get very very sinister and you just start to figure out how things work now there are a lot of plot holes in this game that you're gonna find but I'll point those out as we go along or at least gameplay holes mechanical holes where it's like okay so I jumped a guard and nothing happened like he doesn't remember my face for knocking him the hell out or anything there's there's a lot of like weird little things but other than that the game is pretty cool so dear mildew Welcome to prison. First Peak Correctional is a brand new state-of-the-art facility designed with your discomfort in mind. All of our staff are highly trained to make sure you stay here. Your stay here is a truly unpleasant one. You've got a long sentence ahead, so make yourself at home and don't even think about escaping. Warden Dean Hall. The name of the warden is always some developer or some famous person in gaming. So there's Dean Hall. I've had Warden Jim Sterling. I've had Warden Yahtzee, I think. But anyways, we'll keep going. So this is how every single day starts out. We're going to start out by, let's talk about some basics here. So I'm going to pause the game as it sits right here. 
And these little buttons, let's talk about these first since I'm pausing using them. This is our outfit, our armor that we're wearing, and this is our weapon. We have three stats, strength, which affects the damage that you deal and your ability to pick things up. So we can pick up, for example, we can pick up these cupboards and move them around to stand on top of them if we wanted to get over and look into the ventilation system. Things like that. Speed affects how fast you move on the overall game map, which is really good because you're going to be running from a lot of people. There's going to be occasional hits on you and also the guards, you need to outrun them. The guards will eventually give up in this game, like they don't endlessly chase you. It's not like they don't know you're not going to go back to your cell, but for whatever reason, the developers have decided to put it to where you can outrun the guards, and so if you get into trouble, you can outrun them eventually. They'll just give up, huff and puff, and go away and forget about the whole thing. Intellect is your ability to craft things, and also it affects what jobs you can get, and you are going to need every single one of these stats in spades. You're going to need loads of these stats. Like, I pretty much focus out on the first week. You want to max out every stat, and then from there, start working on other practicalities. Up at the top left hand, you've got your cash on hand. That's how much money you have. Have. You earn it by doing your job every day and also by beating people up, stealing stuff, and doing quests. You've got your health. This increases as you go up with strength, so I forgot about that. As your strength goes up, you get more HP. You can get up to like 45 or so as the max. That's your heat. That's how angry the guards are with you. The higher it gets, the more likely they are just to pistol whip the shit out of you and just kind of teach you a lesson. So you want to keep that realistically pretty low most of the time, but it doesn't really matter. You'll find that in this game you can more or less do whatever the hell you want, and very few people will ever stop you. Journal, journal favors. This is where we category or categorize all of our favors. So this is basically a quest log. We get also crafting notes right here. As we unlock crafting recipes, which are hidden all over the map, there is crafting recipes hidden on the map. And additionally, you can buy them from other prisoners, so you can bribe them to teach you how to do certain things. And that's how you fill out your crafting note pages. You've also got the crafting menu right here, and it's important to note that you do have to put things in the right order in order to get them to craft. At least. I've played around with a couple recipes, and it seems like if you don't put them in the right order, it doesn't work. Don't quote me on that one, but I'm pretty sure I played around with the sock with the battery in it, and when I put sock and battery, it worked, and when I put battery and sock, it didn't work. So I'm assuming you have to put them in the proper order, and that's to keep you from guessing some of the recipes, I think, because I think the developers want you to go through the process of learning to be in prison the first time. Now, I don't know what the replayability would be on this game, because really, once you learn all the recipes and you memorize them all, you can really get rid of that gameplay facet. So... I don't know, maybe you could you could rationalize it as you're like a second or third timer. You're 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 no stranger to Susie's house, I guess. Let's go ahead and get started. So at 8 o'clock we're gonna have our first roll call. And so there it goes. Taking a look inside of our desk, we've got ourselves a comb, a tube of toothpaste, a roll of toilet paper, and a bar of soap. Now anybody, you see that little sack flickering over his head? That means that he's selling something, he's fencing something. You can get illicit goods or you can get legal goods from other inmates, and you do that by right-clicking them. It's going to open up their menu to show you what their strength, their speed, and their intelligence is. And I don't... their opinion. Oh, that's whether they like you or not. Okay, I forgot about that. We can also give them stuff, so if we owe them anything, we can give them that. We can pay them money to make their opinion go up of us. And then we can buy stuff from them. So you'll see right here, this guy has a crafting note. He's also got a tub of talcum powder. We want to get that from him, I think. We're going to want to get the tub of talcum powder because we can combine it with toothpaste in order to make a mold or to make putty. And once we have putty, we can do all kinds of fun stuff with that, so... This guy right here with the green thing above his head, that means that he's got himself a quest. The guards here are just going to say all kinds of funny stuff, so today they're going to have a shakedown. It's Gavin and Marshall are the first people, so if they have anything illicit in their cell, the guards will go ahead and confiscate it and they'll put them in the shoe. Luckily it wasn't us. I've never seen my name get drawn in three hours of playing, as I used to say to my cheating ex. Whoever broke into the utility shed is finished. Is that a normal conversation that comes up with your ex? Do you have a severe rash of people breaking into your utility shed? God. Some of the conversations in this game are hilarious. Let's get some quests. Officer Adam says he has VIP access. Okay, so we don't want to beat up a guard. That's tough. We don't- we're not gonna be able to do that. That guy wants a timber brace. I don't know how to craft it, so we're not gonna take that. This guy wants a bottle of medicine. He wants us to be able to- okay, so we'll keep an eye out for the bottle of medicine. Instead of going to breakfast, we're gonna work out right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working on my speed first. And honestly, you don't have to do most of the things they tell you to do. It's sort of like the bully, where once you realize the rules of the game, you can kind of sneak your way around and you don't have to really participate in any of the mandatory fun activities. So let's- we'll go to breakfast in just a minute. Okay, so he wants us to move along. So we snuck in a little workout. Okay, alright. We snuck in- calm down, guards. You can see here that my heat went up to 38%. It'll go down over time. We can come over to the tray, left click it, click it. We'll grab our food and we come over to the bench to sit down. Now, there are a number of other things that you want to talk about. So, spacebar changes you from hostile to passive mode. You see how the cursor changes. And if you're in passive mode, you can't hurt anybody. But if you go into active mode, like that red arrow right there, 
it means anybody you click, you will start a fist fight with them. Be careful. I constantly accidentally start fights based on the fact that I have the wrong clicker on. I'll talk about the metal detector back. Okay, so we'll talk about this. This is our job. So we're in the laundry room. We're going to take dirty clothes out of the laundry. And we're going to throw them into the laundry machines. And as they finish, we're going to replace them with new pieces. And you could do that with hotkeys just to make this go a little bit quicker. We'll drop these into the clean laundry. And you'll see that there's a bar at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. That's how close to being done we are. Once you're done, you can leave. Who cares? So let's go ahead and finish this job as fast as we can. And we're almost done. Now you can future proof for the next day. Just things to think about while you're here. If you wanted to drop things, you can just right click them in your inventory and it'll drop them on the ground. So we can actually get our quota ready for tomorrow if we wanted to. So let's do that. So that we can do this ultra fast tomorrow. The guards will- oh, they're confiscating him, son of a bitch. Okay, so that's bad. Maybe leave them in the machines then. Let's leave them in the machines. Now these things right here, if you walk through these with any contraband on you, they automatically go off. All the guards will rush you. And if you come out into the yard, you'll get shot because there's guard towers with guns. So you need to be very careful about that. I also wanted to point out that the game is in early access mode. So a lot of the features have not been implemented yet. The game is completable as it stands right now. I would say that it's almost in kind of like a, not a beta because it's not feature complete yet, but it's getting closer. I'm gonna go to the library and let's go ahead and get our intellect up. Let's get some book learning going so that we can learn how to make ourselves some turlet wine. Mm -mm -mm. Make ourselves some pruno. Alrighty, let's go ahead and we will... It's given us a little bit of fatigue, but for right now, we also want to be on the lookout. We do have a quest to get... What was it? We have a quest to get medicine for William, so we may want to raid somebody else's cell really quickly. Now it's time for midday roll call. Yeah, we don't need to go to that right now. After this will come the workout period. Let's go ahead and continue until somebody sends us to the roll call, or at least people get grubby with us. As you can see, the other prisoners aren't particularly worried about it, so we'll just wait a minute. If we take a look at our stats, you'll see that our intelligence has gone way, way up. Your stats do deteriorate over time. I do think that there's a balance issue right there. They need to make it so they don't deteriorate quite as fast. At the moment, your stats go down really, really fast so that you spend a large chunk of almost every day working out or reading. All right, I'm going. Calm down, bull. We're on our way over here. You know how it go, boss. We move into the roll call, boss. What's this guy got? Okay, this guy got a bottle of medicine for me. I could take that, but will I make a profit is the question. No, I'll get- I'll lose five dollars on that. So I can jump this guy and I can take his stuff, which we're not strong enough to do, I don't think. No, he'll kick our ass. He'll totally kick our ass. He's way stronger than us. So what we want to do for right now is let's get a few more quests. Micah has earned himself a beating. How do you feel about dishing one out? Yeah, let's kick Micah's ass. Micah wants us to distract the guards during the next roll call. And he'll kick somebody's ass while we do that. Nah, the guards are tough to do. Darren, okay, so he wants us to beat up Darren, so we'll take that. Okay, and so we got afternoon free period now. What we want to do in afternoon free period is we're going to go to the shower and we're going to get our fatigue down on our meter right here so they're not quite as tired. If you hang out in the shower, it makes your fatigue go down. So let's chill here for a minute. We're not going to be able to do any of our jumpings or anything like that until at least a day or two from now. But you want to accumulate the quest so that you can do four or five in one go and get yourself a big old pile of money so that you can start bartering for the things that you need. Let's go ahead and start doing some reps here. Every two reps, it's going to cost you a little bit of fatigue, but your strength points are going to go up by one. You do this by mashing the Q and the E keys, and I apologize, I have a mechanical keyboard, so this might get a little bit noisy. But you'll just have to bear with me. So let's get our pecs all filled out right here, like, mm, pump that iron. Get ready for the yard war. Mm -hmm. Now you can't join gangs or anything like that right now. That is a feature that I would love to see added is like the little, the gang culture that's in prison because there is a very, very real gang culture in prison. You've got bloods, you've got crips, you've got the kinfolk, you've got all kinds of people. It depends on the prison you go to, but every prison has their own little sets. And I do think that that's a realistic part of prison where they should be thinking about implementing that where you've got to ally yourselves with various forces to make sure that you get things done or so that you can just piss people off and make sure that you don't get jumped. I'm going to use this entire free period to work out and get our strength up. First and foremost, it's going to take us a little while. I think it's going to be at least day four or five before we're ready to roll out and start doing some hits. But it'll be okay. You also want to pay attention. Okay, so dinner's up, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and we're going to work out real fast until somebody sends us to dinner. So let's go ahead and put that up. 
Okay, and after this we're gonna have workout period and then we'll have evening we have workout period then we have our shower period and after that we have ourselves a, another free period so we should be able to totally beef out our stats before the end of the day like we should like beef gang by the time we oh hell I accidentally stood up on the counter that was my bad you can stand up on counters and things watch out for that it's very easy to get yourself into trouble on accident in this game by just like standing on the wrong thing or you know doing something dumb here comes the exercise period I'm gonna take a spoon a fork and a knife from the utensils tray over here and we'll use those later you'll see for what for right now we're not going to be able to worry about it but later on in the game having some of this stuff's going to be important now why you're allowed to have forks and knives in your cell I'm not really sure but whatever we're not going to think about it let's try and max out strength right now I don't know how we're doing but I can reasonably assume we're probably not doing well we need to be at at least 85 90 strength before we can be very consistent in a fight as well as finding ourselves a weapon so maybe like a sock and a battery or if we can find ourselves a comb and a razor blade we can make ourselves a tomahawk you can make shivs as well out of sheet metal and wooden handles or something like that basically you can make all kinds of weapons you could also beat up a guard and take their yardstick so watch out for are their knights not their yardstick there you can take their nightstick if you want to we're in the shower right now so let's get going we're gonna take the less populated side just because I feel more comfortable I don't know if that's Freudian or not but you know what bunch of naked dudes bunch of naked criminals in a shower man I'm gonna take the side with less people just in case now fun bathroom facts from the prisoner side of things if you are taking a dump in prison you should take your pants off one leg that's one thing that people learn when they go to prison and this is straight from a first-hand source when you sit down to take a dump in prison you don't leave your pants around your ankles you take one foot out of your pants and that's so that if somebody jumps you while you're taking a dump because that's a great time to jump somebody it means that you can stand up and just like poo and fight at the same time and if you go to take a piss you want somebody to watch your back because as far as I hear it nobody's able to piss and fight at the same time that is just something that nobody can do so there you go your prison factoids of the day we've got evening free time I think I'm gonna focus on the bench still because we got to be able to put out that damage and we also want to have a whole bunch of HP going for us all right I think we should be able to get ourselves I don't know what we were at but it looks like we're doing pretty good for our first day I mean we need to definitely get ourselves satisfied with regards to uh, as you can see our HP when we started out this episode was at like 18 now it's at 32 so I think I think we're doing pretty well right now we're almost fatigued out again there's no dinner so unfortunately we already had dinner so what we're gonna have to do now to get our fatigue down let's hang out in the shower for a little bit and appraising our work for the day we made it up to 70 strength out of 100 not bad not bad at all we also got our intellect up to 52 now what we want to be on the lookout for is we got paid for the job that we did in the laundry earlier so we're sitting at 40 cash right now I'd like to get this up to like 200 to 250 cash at that point what we want to do is we want to start canvassing every single prisoner and start putting together some of the things we need to orchestrate our escape whether it's going straight out the front door or digging out of our cell I don't know a lot of the crafting recipes so that's gonna be something we're gonna have to learn along the way but it should be alright because we can get all of the recipes from our fellow prisoners after this we're gonna have our evening roll call I think that's at 8 o'clock I don't know we may not have time to get this done so we want to max out before we go to bed because every night your fatigue goes down to 20% so you really want to be maxed out every time you go to bed so there we go hit that iron get that thing going put it up son get it get after it come on now Ooh, two more reps you got this I wonder what we're benching right now probably not like body weight we just got to prison although if I had my trial going I'd definitely be working out while I was in county waiting to go to jail the difference between prison and jail, if you don't know, is that jail is where you go after you've been sentenced, whereas prison is where you go while you're waiting to be sentenced, as I recall. So now we have evening roll call. Our fatigue is way too high to do anything, so that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and hang out right here, and we'll see what the scuttlebutt is with the remainder of our prisoners. So Micah wants us to distract the guards. Nah, we're going to say no to that. Gavin wants me to beat up William. Okay, we'll beat up William. That sounds all right. Who's William? We want to start learning to identify people by what they look like. And you will. It's a weird thing. You start to learn what people look like and you would be like, okay, I know where Michael is. Let's go get him. Isaac wants us to get him a set of dice. Okay. We can make that happen. And there's a number of ways that you can get this contraband merchandise. The number one way is just to beat people up and take it from them. But that makes you run the risk of getting taken to the shoe and arrested by the cops or beat up and sent to the 
hospital area, which is up in the top right hand corner. The best way that I've found is actually during free time to go into people's cells and just steal stuff from their cells. Pretty good way to get her done. Let's go back to our cell because it's now lights out. And what we want to do for now is we want to stow all the stuff that we've stolen for the day. So we've got the fork, we've got the spoon, and we've got the knife. We're going to melt these later. If you didn't know, we're going to make molten plastic out of these later once we get ourselves a lighter and some other stuff. The way that you melt plastic in prison, I don't know if anybody knows this, but I want this to be an educational type deal, is you take toilet paper, and this is real life. You take toilet paper, and what you do with the toilet paper is you make a roll around your hand. And once you do, once you have it around your hand, you stand it up sort of. So you make like a cylinder of toilet paper and you stand it up on the toilet on its end. And so you stand it up just like it is on the roll right here and you light the top of it. And you want to get it thick enough where it stands up on its own. And what will happen is when you light the top of it, it'll curl in on itself. And it'll create like a self-replicating burner that'll last for a little while. And you can melt plastic down with it. And then what you do is you just pat it out with your hand and make yourself a knife or a shiv or whatever it is that you need to do. People talk about scraping it on the floor. Typically that doesn't happen. Scraping it on the floor is too noisy. I mean, you can do it. But that's the way that I've heard right there is that you actually make yourself a flame. Oh, they locked us in. So we can click on our bed and we can go to sleep. We can stand on our desk right here. You'll see if there's a ventilation system. Watch out for that. I've played around in the ventilation system, but I haven't really mastered the art of not getting caught in the vents. Because the guards seem to notice that your vent is open really, really quickly. Let's go ahead and we'll go to sleep. And as you can see, it resets us down to 20 fatigue no matter what we do. And so we're just going to hang out right here for a little bit. Alright, alarm is up. We're going to sleep in a tiny bit just to get our fatigue all the way down. And let's go ahead and report in and see what's going on over here. Let's see what's on sale. This guy's got himself a booby mag. He's got talcum powder, a file, which is contraband. You see how the name is in red? It means, the, it's in, it means that it's contraband. And if you go through one of those metal detectors, they'll find out. Even if it's plastic, they'll find out. What's Han's got? This guy, oh, this guy's got a baton and a crowbar? Jesus, man, where are you keeping this shit on yourself? Xavier's rocking it. Apparently, things have gotten hard since he got out of the Academy for Mutants. He's not educated. He's not in education anymore. He's in a whole different brand of education. All right, it's outfit. We've got the flashlight. The sheet of metal will be useful to us later, but I just want to know what everybody has. We'll keep that in mind as we go through the day. These events right here don't really affect anything as far as I can tell. It's not actually like a recap of the current day or the previous day. I, I'm not really sure. I think this is just kind of the routine to get you into the feel of knowing how it is to be in prison. I will say the game does start to feel a little bit tedious after a while, but I think it's supposed to kind of feel that way because you're in prison. It's almost like, sir, oh, I'm sorry, not sir. It's like papers, please, where it's kind of supposed to be tedious, I guess. Let's do a little workout while we wait here. I think we can get at least... Let's try and get up to 10 speed out of this. I'm sorry, 5 speed out of this before we go to dinner. Okay, our speed stat is up by 5. Let's go ahead and get on in here. We got ourselves a little bit of heat, but it'll be okay. We'll eat the meal. That's going to allow us to lower our fatigue by quite a bit. And I think that after work, I'll break off this episode. So there it is. We're carrying our tray around, but we're done. I've already eaten. I don't think we can... No, we can leave. Okay. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Let's go do our job quota, and we'll see what's remaining over here, because I was sort of experimenting a little bit with leaving the clothing on the ground. So they actually... Okay, so they didn't pick up the stuff off the ground. So we should be able to get this done pretty quickly. Guards coming in to check on us. We don't want to be up to anything nasty right now. Let's go ahead and get those going so we can earn some extra cash. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and drop those right there. We'll put that back there so the guards don't confiscate it. And then we'll put this right here. There we go. And once those are done, we're gonna leave that in the machine. We're done with our work. And so I think this is a good place for me to break off this episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for the first episode of The Escapists. I look forward to playing this game with all of you. I've been really, really excited about this one. And I do think it's gonna be a fun game as we kind of discover, explore, and figure things out. Take care out there, everybody. And I will see you in the next episode. Hi-do!